Do you think that the real estate market is going to improve for the next couple of months? Um, it may a little bit. I mean, uh, inventory and sales are very seasonal, and we're sort of going into the end of the prime home buying season, so it might even just be a seasonal upward tick. I mean, as you said, the problem is there are so many existing homeowners out there today who really don't have the incentive, as they've had in years past, to want to sell in the first place. And so you don't see sales because you don't see people wanting to move. But Mark, what about prices? I mean, we've seen affordability really hurt, especially as we saw mortgage rates increase this past year. Do you really hit a wall in prices? Or if there's so much demand and so little supply, can prices continue to go higher? Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, well, when you have a, a lack of supply relative to demand, and we have very strong demand in the form of a millennial first-time home buyer, then prices go up. So it's not a surprise that prices are rising. I think the, your point, fast, how long can it go? But you have to take into account, even though uh, rates have gone up a little bit and we have reduced some affordability, when you look back from a historic perspective, even a mortgage rate at 4 or 4.5% allows you to buy an awful lot of home. And that's one of the main reasons why we continue to see the purchases that we see and prices rising because in long run basis, it's still affordable. Well, Mark, you look at trends all the time. We talk about millennials always wanting to be near the city. They're obviously aging into their marriage years, their child years. They want to live out in the suburbs. But we have so many more single family rentals now. Do you think that this desire to rent will continue for them even in their supposed home buying years? Well, I, there's a, two points there that you make, really, is that, one, the move out to suburbia driven, really, by lifestyle choices. Uh, um, like every other generation, maybe a, a little bit later than other generations, that desire for suburbia and what it provides when you're raising a family is very uh, alluring. Um, about a third of all the houses in the, in the housing stock are traditionally rentals. So, you know, we've always had a pretty large rental share uh, of houses out there. But if there is demand, uh, then there's an incentive for those rent owners of those rental properties to potentially turn them into owner-occupied. Yeah, this is a big issue. I mean, there are 88 million millennials, 74 million baby boomers. So we've got this massive generation coming out. I think the number one age is 27. There's 5 million or so 27-year-olds out there, Mark. They're about ready to enter that time in their life. What's going to happen to housing prices if we don't build more housing stock? Right, it's a great Where are they going to go? There's a great demographic story. We have a 10-year uh, long, uh, long run tailwind ahead of us. You know, we've already formed 8 million new households in the United States since the end of the Great Recession, and we've only built about 5 million new housing units. So you know, that to me is also the, a larger issue is we need to build a lot more, and that's not easy. And if we don't, prices will continue to rise, and you know, the market forces will take into effect, and people will start to not really, really be able to afford homes. We already see that in some markets. San Francisco is a classic market. Um, um, most people who are renters today in San Francisco cannot afford to buy most of the homes that are for sale. You know, I talk to a lot of builders, and they argue they cannot build affordable homes, not with the high price for land, labor, materials. And now we have tariffs mixed into that. Canadian lumber, you have steel tariffs, you have aluminum tariffs. Uh, they claim all they can build is the move up and the luxury home. Where do you get that entry-level housing stock? Uh, that's that's a huge challenge. The the fixed costs going into building the homes because of regulation and zoning in many parts of the country are quite expensive, and the you know higher production costs there too. Um, the the home construction industry is really on the verge of a potential significant increase in productivity. If you think about it, uh, we really have built homes the same way we've always built them for sort of the last 50 years. We haven't seen much productivity gains in that space and. Many of the larger home builders are now looking into modular and manufactured uh, portions to reduce costs and help to sort of make the economics work at those lower price points.